Welcome everyone. Hi, everyone. Um, like usual, we're just going to get started in about two minutes, give people some time to enter. Okay, so welcome to Paper Making in Chile, Creating Our Own Tradition, a lecture by um, Carolina Larea. We're very happy to have Carolina with us here today. Before we get started, closed captioning is available for this talk. If you would like to turn on subtitles, you can navigate to the bottom of your Zoom screen and click the button and then click show subtitles. This lecture is the second of five in our Global Perspectives and Hand Paper Making series. The series features paper makers from around the world exploring both historic and contemporary approaches to paper making through talks by individuals with expertise in paper making in Japan, Korea, India, Chile, and Spain. Among the topics discussed will be traditional fibers, tools, and paper making techniques, as well as contemporary trends in production paper making and artistic experimentation. Thank you to the Wingate Foundation for their generous support of this program. In this talk, Carolina Larea, longstanding instructor of paper making at the School of Arts of Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile, will speak to the way Chile has only recently begun building a tradition in paper making. Larea will provide insight into the role of paper making in Chile as a paper making teacher and artist considers the medium to be unique in that it encourages collaboration with nature and introspection on behalf of the maker through the lengthy process of turning plant fibers into paper and paper-based artworks. Larea will also speak about paper making in relation to Gaido, a Zen Buddhist philosophy that emphasizes the importance of process in art making. Carolina Larea received her PhD in arts, productions, and research at the Universidad uh, Politecnica. Politecnica de Valencia, España. Larea is vice president of IATMA and head of the program Diploma in the Arts, um, uh, Diploma in the Arts of Papermaking and Bookbinding, uh, Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile School of Arts. Visual artist and associate professor at, the at this university, she taught papermaking as a means of expression from 2002 until 2019 in addition to teaching book arts and printmaking. Carolina or Carolina approaches paper making from a philosophical standpoint and creates artwork that combine paper making, printmaking and mixed media techniques. Her work has been exhibited in many countries, including China, Brazil, the USA, Spain, Poland, the Philippines, England and Bulgaria, among others. A few technical notes, this talk will last about 45 minutes. And if you have questions, feel free to navigate to the bottom of your Zoom window and click the Q&A function, and you can enter all of your questions there. Your questions will be answered in the last 10 minutes of the session. This webinar will be recorded and made available on our website in about two weeks. And if you're interested in watching any of our previous webinars, just navigate to the Dujone events page on our website or to our YouTube page to access the video links. Um, thank you all for being here today, Carolina. 
Carolina, I'll hand it off to you. You are muted. Thank you. I didn't want to make any noise while you were talking. So now again, um, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for coming and uh, and for being interested on uh, on paper making in my country in Chile. So um, now I will talk about how this uh, this. All of this began. So um, I have to. Okay. So uh, let's start talking about how hand paper making began in Chile, and we are talking about seventies uh, when um, when the two artists were interested on this craft and were introduced uh, to Helen Koretsky by another young artist called Francisca Sutil that she were, she were studying art in New York. And uh, she made an, uh, a residence in, uh, with Elaine and learned from her the art of paper making. But Francisca is, uh, she's a painter and printmaker and she work on uh, paper making, but mostly in a uh, pulp painting. She didn't make sheet of paper. She worked with the pulp itself, dying with, with strong colors and very bright in color. And uh, when Elaine visited, uh, Elaine Koreski visited Chile, uh, Francisca introduced these two artists uh, called uh, Teresa Gasitua and Lea Kleiner. Both of them were professor at the University of Chile. And, um, and uh, they talked to Elaine and Elaine told them how to make paper, but just in a conversation. Here is a, a photograph of uh, Lea Kleiner in the the right one, Lea Kleiner and Teresa Gasitua. And uh, they start making paper, but recycling paper and how it everything started because Francisca returned to United States. So uh, nobody was teaching paper making at that time. And both of these artists, Teresa and Lea start uh, wondering how to make paper from this conversation with Elaine. So here's the Lea Kleiner. She's the artist, uh, specialist in uh, specialist in uh, watercolor, and she did paper making, but she didn't work real, uh, really in uh, in paper making for her artwork. And uh, Teresa da Situa, uh, she's a printmaker. Uh, and she didn't teach paper making. She made a research mostly. And the third uh, professor that made paper was Lucia Weiser. Uh, she is uh, from the University of Chile. She's a sculptor, a printmaker, and also work with uh, paper. So the first two were, uh, as I told you before, uh, they had a conversation with Elaine Koreski, so they had to find out themselves how to practice the art of paper making. But Lucia uh, Weiser, she uh, learned in Berkeley with uh, John Ryan. She took uh, a workshop with uh, John uh, of uh, experimental paper making. So uh, she worked uh, mostly in cast paper. Leah and uh, Teresa works uh, mostly with um, with paper pulp and cotton paper uh, and and a uh, recycled paper. And in one point, Teresa uh, was uh, working with cellulose, pure cellulose that she got from industrial uh, paper make, paper mill. And she worked on casting paper, not making paper. I remember to see some of her work 
a uh, long time ago with the with just pieces of paper not really a sheet of paper uh, and she makes it with other papers to print on top of uh, of them and uh, and then another works and most of the last last time last work that she made were casting paper and leah just did uh, paper making uh, paper making lucia buys a work on on casting paper most and the three of them work with the pulp already made uh, but it's important the work of them as a teacher so leah kleiner was a great teacher of paper making in the university of chile and we can remark uh, two of uh, their students alejandra bobadilla and ivan perez uh, Alejandra was teaching papermaking for a long time uh, in, in schools and her workshop and her studio. And Ivan Perez has uh, a private studio and he teach also for a long time many workshops and he was a papermaker who produced a uh, very good quality of paper. And uh, Teresa Gasitua was as I told you before, she did printmaking, uh, but not uh, paper making. She made a research on handmade paper, but also as, uh, she uh, worked mainly uh, with the uh, cotton paper. And Lucia Weiser was the professor of Iris Brockedis. And she was a great artist. She still made paper and still did paper making. And I think uh, these three trainees were the most important artists in the uh, 90s. Uh, were at the same time they were exhibit, making exhibition art as um, paper artists. They they teach uh, paper making uh, and uh, they start teaching uh, paper making from plants that Leah, Teresa and Lucia didn't work on. And uh, the other way of uh, learning paper making in that time was reading books or uh, going in a workshop. And that was the case in San Miguel de Allende School of Art and Craft in Mexico, there were a paper making uh, workshop. And uh, in that time, the only book in Spanish was paper, uh, paper making by hand uh, from an Argentinian, uh, Craftman Ricardo Crivelli, and that's my case. I went to San Miguel de Allende, just I was visiting Mexico, and I saw this uh, workshop, and I was completely captured uh, my attention. And I just took photograph and just taking notes because um, a friend of mine were taking this workshop. And then when I came back, I started trying to find uh, information about this. And the, the first book that I, that I had was this book that I borrowed with, uh, from Ivan. Uh, we were classmates in lithography, so we, we met before. And we were talking and I was taking note and, and I, I borrowed this book from Ivan. And, uh, and then I, I got this book from Tim Barrett. Japanese paper making and it was that time was 1996 I think in that time I started working on 1994 and in San Miguel Leyenda so we start just just experimenting with plants and I think uh, four of us were in the same area experimenting with the wild plants garden plants and, and vegetable that you you cannot eat that part that you cannot eat like asparagus and artichokes and uh, and then we comment our results so that's the the first time that we were uh, trying to to develop this this craft in in Chile um here's some of the the work of the former paper makers that i mentioned this is the work of leah kleiner as i told you before she didn't have any work on uh, with with the paper pulp or or paper making but uh, here's the the work of lucia weiser that she studied in berkeley uh, uh, as i mentioned and she makes printmaking with casting paper 
and some of her work that is very close to sculpture sometimes because she's a sculptor and she works on sculpture now. Um, she's no longer working on, on paper making. She works on paper, but not in paper making. And this is the last word I mentioned, uh, uh, Teresa Gasitua, where she worked on casting with a uh, cellulose uh, pulp. And uh, uh, the main plants that uh, we use in Chile the first time um, was, well, this is the, the uh, I want to remark this plant because it's, is native from Chile is we call chawal and has a very strong uh, fiber. And other plant that we, we used to work on in the 90s and still work in my classes is thistle or sisal that we call agave, then it's very irritated for skin. So we have to be very careful when we process this plant, but it's a very wide, uh, fiber inside this this uh, peel, this very thick peel. And uh, mulberry, that is Morus alba, is not the mulberry, it's not uh, Blusuneta canisoki, is, is a different uh, species. But it also can be used for Japanese paper, not with the quality that we know. Uh, Bird of paradise, um, different species of palm, and are very strong fiber and hard to, to process. Uh, cordyline and uh, formio that we call pita in Argentina is form, formio and the uh, botanical name is formio, formio tenax, I think. New Zealand flax is also the name for this. And we also work in other, uh, other um, fiber, as I mentioned, uh, this vegetable like a part of the of the, the asparagus, part of the 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 bedroot uh, stems, the uh, carrot or cane, uh, sugar cane, also hollyhock, and well, banana leaves. Uh, Many, many plants that also you can find in the United States, but this, these plants you can find in different gardens here in Chile. It's very easy to, to get and, uh, and talk with gar gardeners when they, they top the, the gardens, etc. So these are the main plants that we used to work at the beginning, but then we start working in, in uh, different fibers. In my case, I started working in Japanese paper making. So I didn't came back to work for my artwork with those uh, fibers. But my students, yeah, they, they do. So the next topic that I want to talk about is about education, uh, where I call kami do, do coming from the, 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 the voice um, dao and tao. So it's like uh, Willa uh, mentioned is Geido. And Geido is the way of art of uh, Buddhist, Buddhism, Zen Buddhism. So every Do, like Yu Do or Sho Do in the way of, uh, if we speak about calligraphy, here Kami that is for paper, I, I named it the way of paper because it's, uh, it's a way uh, where you start learning step by step, and it's a way of learning and thinking and, uh, and uh, living. It's a way of life. So you get close to nature, that's the idea. And for me as a teacher, it's a way of uh, art practicing. It's how my, I want my students learn this process, learn this craft, learn this transformation of the nature. So here is a, a small video where I compiled the, all these years of uh, teaching paper making. So let's see, um, this is my first uh, group uh, that, I, that I had in uh, 2002. And some of the work they made and how they are very careful 
to work on paper. And this is some results of uh, recycled paper. This when they learn how to make a sheet of paper and all the possibilities of art expression. But also they work in, in a paper plant and it's the part that they love the most because they are aware how the nature can be transformed and can be real recycled because they, they, uh, they did, a, they were, they had a role, you know, like a artichoke, the leaves that they eat and then how, what can I do with this? Well, I can make paper from this. It's another function. Uh, the same here that they work on uh, on corn uh, leaves or stock or asparagus or part of the this asparagus or different plants that they have in their garden that is very grown uh, <laughs> uh, they they cannot use uh, uh, small plants they have to use when they are really uh, grown all the 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 year and uh, and then they make art from them but the first uh, thing that is most 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 important in the class is learn to work in, in groups a teamwork and everything has a role there some they have to cut the stems uh, another group has to cook them and then to prepare the pulp in the hollander or beating the pulp uh, like this, uh, so if they don't work in group, they cannot have the, the, the fiber for everybody. So they have to learn to share, to agree some steps uh, and that it, it is important in art career because most of the work, they are most of the class, I mean, they work alone by themselves the uh, selves and uh, here they have to make decision in groups and have to learn how to share and uh, that it it is important in life to get agree with something and share experience and this is uh, experience from everybody but in that time uh, for my my phd uh, work i asked uh, asked them to uh, along with the, re the, the record that they have to fill in with every step of the work, they have a paper making diary and uh, that is uh, personal. So they were, they were writing with the steps of paper making what uh, they think about this transformation in the plant and what happened with in their body if they have any memories of smell, texture, everything, and how they, uh, how they, they uh, see the process, how they perceive the plants, how they uh, can make a decision of this or, or that, and, or the, the work in, in, with the classmates, how they per perceive that, and, and what's the, the main thing they gained from this experience. So everything they were writing with no uh, editing. That's the, the, the idea, not don't edit what you write. You write what is going out from your feelings and thinking. So that was a, a nice experience for them and for me to see what happened and, and, and made a comparison with, between them and and, and with my own experience as a paper maker and paper artist as well. So um, all these experience were, were very nice because sometimes the, the work is very slow so they can get known each other like wait in the, in the uh, Hollander where they have to, to work with a classmate. They cannot be themselves for anything happen. So here there is some example of a, those papers, pineapple leaves or, or garlic uh, stems of the plants, different paper uh, different, and, and different process of paper. Because when, when two groups work the same uh, fiber, the same plant, they have to change one of the process to see the difference. 
So sometimes they use Hollander and sometimes they beat the fiber, the fiber. The same plant, one in the one the part in the Hollander and one part in the uh, beating the fiber to see difference. So, and also different way of uh, make a sheet of paper. They learn how to use uh, different techniques, pouring uh, method uh, or or um, the I what's the <laughs> I forgot the the pouring met method and the um, Tamesuki way. I forgot the the, the word. Um, different techniques to make the sheet of paper. Um, and this is uh, another, this is the, the, the record that they have to fill. And then when they are, if we get close to this, um, you see the, what's the, the name of the fiber, the weight, in, in, uh, and if it's dry or green, uh, the fiber, uh, soaking for how long and, if, if they add something uh, in the water, could be milk, could be beer to, you know, increase the, the, the bacteria activities and, and ferment it for, uh, quickly. Uh, then the time of cooking, uh, the, the type of alkali they use, how they, if they use uh, beating the fiber or blender, or um, we have the uh, big blender, not with knives, just to mix it. Or, or Hollander and the pH uh, factor and the, the time, uh, the, the, sorry, the size when they make the paper and the size when the, that paper is dry and et cetera, how many papers they got with the, this amount of fiber. So all that information, it could be very helpful if, uh, if they want to repeat uh, and make the paper from bedrock in this case again. And uh, once they finish it, they have to put up a small sample of that paper and they have to make um, many copies of this record to uh, share with the rest of the, of the class. So every group that make uh, an, 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 uh, an exploration, a new, a new fiber, they have to share with everybody. So here is the Tawal with the same information. Sometimes they have more observation about the texture on it and if it's good for any particular use like printmaker, printmaker, sorry, printmaking or watercolor or, or any casting paper, for example. And this is the example for Tawal. And here is uh, Thistle. And there's the sample, so you see different uh, different uh, fibers. Here's the corn, and this uh, it, this is an example that I saw in Lillian Bell's book, and also I started working. This is mine. This is my first uh, record that I made. This is number one, and I made with the uh, Formio, and it was in 1996, I think. And I have all of mine, so that's the example for them. And they start working well. More, more produced. You see, this is very <laughs> like uh, taking notes. Uh, that's the October 30, and I don't remember exactly the the year. But this is the how I I make my own research. So I transmit the same uh, method for my students, and uh, and with this. Uh, uh, a way of working, they made a beautiful artwork, and we will see here some of uh, of the results of this work at different times. Jewelry or this uh, this uh, making with the uh, with uh, watermarks or this casting paper, but really different. Uh, way of using the paper. This is a projection of a really small work. And, and there were, they made a projection on the wall here casting two inside a, a, a box. This is beautiful. This is onion skin paper. It's also, it died with some uh, pigments. And this is uh, an, Music, music student, and she made uh, this artwork with 
music and she worked with uh, with casting paper she made the shape of uh, of the breast of every woman in her family so it's honored the 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 feminine part of, of her family mother sister cousin Here, uh, different fibers, different way of approaching the the art of uh, paper making. Here, mixes with different thing, different way of uh, presenting the. Uh, here's a papyrus of asparagus. Shifu made from pina pineapple leaves. This is an installation with a big size paper. That it looks like a the fabric, a bedspread, casting. And this is very interesting. It's a part of an installation. This is the video of this installation where this student uh, work on the movement or made, a, it's not a movement. It's, um, that's the way they finish the session of uh, every class when they have to, to use this trainer to uh, sear the, the paper pulp and get all the water from, from that and can be storage. So every end of the session, I remember this student that he helped every, every session of the class working and, and steering the paper. So <laughs> he took this movement you know, that she, he made regularly and made this kind of uh, performance. And then in the installation, they, they had different uh, pieces of this pulp that was, you know, moving, moving, and then let, let them, some of them let them fall down on the floor on some of them, uh, he let them dry on the strainer. Um, so this is some of the work of my, of my students. Um, Another topic that I want to talk about is the local paper makers and the paper market here in Chile that is very difficult. Um, I think, uh, let me see, nine years ago, nine, seven years ago, there were uh, more um, paper makers that, uh, that made paper for sale, you now the paper market. Uh, that I call, but it's not the big market here in Chile. There is no many people that that get used to buy paper. Uh, most of them are artists that want to use the paper for different uh, techniques or or installations and or make a special paper. So it's not uh, craft for the, uh, that you can uh, live. <laughs> uh, from uh, from that uh, this craft is not enough money to live for. It's very difficult. So the the paper makers that live from this is are I think is they they are do, they they do that for love, not because it's a, it's a real business that you can get enough money for living. So in in this uh, in this time, all artists. Uh, time, I know two paper makers that uh, still work on, on, on paper for a living. And one of them is uh, Victoria Aguirre from Valparaíso. And um, she has uh, this, uh, this company, really small company, Inventando Papeles, that you can find in Instagram with the same name, Inventando Papeles. And uh, she works in uh, recycled paper, different colors. And uh, the thing that I, that I, can, I want to remark is that Victoria is, uh, she's been very careful with the process of this paper and uh, this paper and uh, plant uh, fibers 
uh, to use not toxic uh, uh, materials and processes in order to to get the recognition of the Ministry of uh, Education and, and Health uh, to have the seal of uh, non-toxic for children. So the children can, can work on this with no, 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 um, no problem. So it's very uh, safe. And this is all the example of uh, this paper. And there's a wide variety of uh, paper for selling, a stationery also. And this is a special paper uh, for a sale. The other, um, the other uh, paper maker is Julio Donoso. From, uh, he has uh, his mill, a uh, paper mill in Puente Alto in Santiago. And his company is Donoso Papel. You can find him in uh, Facebook with the same name, Donoso Papel. And also he has an account on Instagram with the same name. So he uh, make mainly cotton paper uh, for artwork. Here's the raw material that he has. And he has a wide variety of uh, paper and uh, he's been working uh, as Victoria as well. They've been working for the last uh, 18, 20 years making paper, but now the last, I think uh, 10 years, maybe less, they are has this huge amount of work. And uh, he also makes uh, plant fibers. And uh, I found, uh, preparing this uh, webinar, I found this photograph when I, that was one of my visiting to his paper mill with my class. This is the undergraduate class. Uh, and they were so happy <laughs> making paper with the, uh, with professional molds and, and using all this, uh, working with the real paper makers and using these tools and working with this high quality cotton. And uh, they were, and, and Julio is very generous. He, he helped it, he, he, well, he, he, uh, he has, uh, he had us uh, visiting not only this group, uh, I think two more groups that I took uh, to his uh, paper mill. And the students were really excited uh, making uh, cotton paper with, uh, uh, with this uh, chains mark. And here's the part where, where uh, the second floor where Julio has uh, their, um, their, his business. So the stationery also, different fibers, different colors. And I was also excited making paper there. <laughs> so I was making paper too. <laughs> Very, uh, very happy, and and yes, and uh, it, Julio also uh, uh, is a teacher. He makes some paper making workshops, uh, intensive classes, some weekends, and so he has this uh, passion. And the and the interesting thing that we have some different uh, way of of uh, making some steps. So that is very interesting also to, for my students to see there is no only one way to make uh, traditional paper making, for example, as uh, they make the, these different techniques for make a sheet of paper, there is different techniques for others' uh, steps. So every, every uh, experience is valuable. And the last topic that I want to talk about is about the artist of, uh, of Chile that is working on paper making right now uh, and how the contemporary art is, is using also uh, handmade paper. And not, it's not only exclusive for, of uh, paper artists, uh, some artists use uh, handmade paper for their projects. Um, I mentioned this artist, uh, those artists before, Francisca Suti, that was the, I think the former uh, paper, uh, paper artist in Chile. And uh, we mentioned Ivan Perez, uh, Alejandra Bobadilla, and Marcela Carvajal is, is another artist that work on paper making for a short time. 
and Ivan Perez is not longer teaching paper. He moved to the countryside and um, he's uh, dedicated to, the, to uh, cultivate um, other plants, not uh, for paper making. Um, but for sure, he, he's still making paper for, for him, uh, his own work. Alejandra Guadilla now is uh, dedicated to fashion uh, design. So she's not longer making paper. And Marcela Carvajal, she's a printmaker. So she's not uh, making paper right now. And Francisca Sutil as a printmaker and painter, she's uh, not working with paper making, uh, with pa uh, handmade paper, sorry. Uh, but we can see her uh, work. And uh, as I mentioned, I think she works more on pulp painting and uh, the character, main characteristic is the, this bright color and strong color, this uh, uh, contrast and, you know, like it's like a paint, but with the pulp. That's the, the work of uh, 80s. And what we have uh, in the last five years, is um, this work of uh, three artists that I want to remark. Uh, first is Clarissa Mentigiaga. She's a designer, also printmaker. And, um, and she made this exhibition for her MFA degree that I have the, I was very lucky to guide it. Is the name is Anthropoceno is uh, about ecology and the extinction of the armadillo in, in, uh, in Argentina and Chile. So she worked with this, the, the, the shell of, of uh, armadillo with the copper and she made an exhibition of photograph and, and, uh, and uh, armadillo shapes with the, these copper pieces and the uh, paper as a, as a record of, of this extinction and how uh, we made is, uh, its shell for, for make uh, different uh, uh, objects. So this is the, the paper part that is uh, uh, accordion book. The other artist is Claudia Palma, and uh, she is, uh, she's a painter, but also work with, uh, with paper making. And she uh, worked with, uh, she was the student of Iris Brokedis, but also she was with Julio Donoso in his paper mill. So Julio was helping her to uh, make this project, Arqueología del Paisaje, Lo Petrio y Lo Frágil. Uh, and, she make this work with uh, with uh, thick pulp. I mean, thick paper. She used uh, cotton pulp with thick paper, and she used pigment for for this work that uh, remains the stone and the clouds. She she made these mixes, and some of the work she makes it with uh, ceramics paper and use uh, copper thread and have this uh, this uh, two size size of uh, of one uh, material the 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 strong and the, on the delicate delicacy and the third uh, artist is it is broken is this uh, She's, she's my colleague, we, we learn at the same time. Um, and this last exhibition that she made is Amabili Resti. And it is uh, work with the Italian Im Im immigration in Chile. Uh, so she worked with documents and uh, photographs and, and made uh, clothes. She is very close to the, the fashion design career. So she teach, uh, she taught, she's not teaching that anymore, but she taught for, for 
a long time in a fashion design school. Now she's teaching in, uh, in uh, school kids. Uh, so, uh, so this is the work of Amabili Resti and uh, she made this dresses and clothes uh, made from uh, paper, different uh, fibers, not only cotton fiber, also she worked with uh, plant fibers like this. And she worked with, uh, as I told you, with documents uh, and, uh, and photograph like this, you see from that, uh, people that arrived in Chile a long time ago and and had a tradition now sorry um, that's I think was the last yes um, so now I will talk uh, finally I will talk uh, of my experience as a paper maker and well as I told you uh, before I start reading books and, and experimenting uh, from the, the, the things I saw in Mexico and then in these uh, books and comparing with, uh, with Ivan uh, or papers and uh, then reading the book of uh, Tim Barrett in, uh, that, that I found in the library of my, of my university. And then uh, 11 years later, of, uh, of uh, exhibition and exploring plants and and mixing with uh, with different techniques, I went to the UICB in the University of Iowa and, and I I learned from uh, Tim Barrett and it was a completely different thing that I've been uh, reading because um, the interpretation of reading is and main mostly if it's in another language. So many things that I thought it was in this certain way it was in totally opposition. So I, when I start uh, learning from Tim, I have to start all over again from zero. And I learned Japanese paper making and uh, traditional Western paper making. It was, it was a discover, it's, it's an, it was an, a door open, a wide open door and I start interesting in, in uh, history of paper making and the source of paper making. So I went to Japan. I already went to uh, Holland and uh, France and visiting paper mill, but still uh, to start working on, on the traditional paper making opened my eyes, a different, uh, a different thing. So when, when I start working on Japanese paper making, I just decided that that's the way I want to make paper the rest of my artistic career. And I started working on just on Japanese, making big sheet of paper, small sheet of paper and uh, making, I, I took a look on this uh, book, uh, the handmade paper of Japan, the, the Seiki collection. And I saw Shifu for the first time. They said, oh, you can make thread from this, uh, from this um, paper and I start making thread by myself, you know, this like twisting paper and very thin and, and making the shifu as I saw the, in this book from 1952. Um, and then the, I think two years later, I went to Japan. So I saw how, how the shifu is made, the, 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 re, the correct uh, process to make shifu. And well, I, I've been working on the Japanese paper in all the, the way I, I could. Oh, so this is my shifu, my, artist, my artistic shifu, and uh, mixing with uh, stitches, different stitches uh, with this paper thread. I made a, pa I made a paper, I transformed it into, into paper thread or kamiito, and then I made the woven work. And the photograph is mine also. So for, for me to work on, on this uh, artwork is the complete process. So it's something that I, I can see how, how uh, it's born from the beginning, from the bark uh, of this plant until transforming into, into this artwork. 
And then here I'm mixing this, the two craft, the Japanese craft of paper thread and the Chilean craft of radi. Radi is, is with uh, horse hair here. It's like a basketing uh, more than weave. So here is translucent because it's the white, uh, the white uh, hair of the horse. So here is black hair, brown hair. And so I'm mixing both ready and, uh, and uh, paper and camito. And here is this uh, more of, of this shifu with the uh, paper stitches and, and some part of this paper thread that open it to, to um, show it as a leaf in this uh, artwork that is called communion. Uh, more, I move the, the weaving uh, to, to express the moving thing. Sorry, some, some <laughs> a neighbor is, is hammering the, the wall. So that's the sound you hear. Um, here is also a shifu where I move the thread in the weaving work to to leave this uh, um, to leave this this work as a as a, as a sea this submerged uh, work and the next work is. Uh, well, it's, uh, since I, I realized that I can make paper thread and, and, and be woven, I start uh, knitting with, uh, with sticks. So this is a, a human scale. And, uh, and this is the, the work, the detail of this work. Then uh, this is a uh, knitting work also that is three meters and a half. It's a non-ending knitting. So it's a continuing, a continuing uh, knitting this work and has a, a transference of, uh, of um, part of the Iliada. This is the uh, Penelope weight. That's the name of this work. And the last work I want to show is Impermanence. Impermanence is a body uh, wor uh, word to express the, the presence and absence at the same time is the how the time goes uh, by Buddhist monks, uh, Buddhist philosophy, sorry. So we are and we are not all the time. So I want to express that in, a, in, a, in an artwork. Um, so I made this where in lithography, I made a big size of paper and I made this exhibition where you can see the image from one side and you cannot see you cannot see that in the other side, you can see just the paper fiber. So I made a short video just for the record. Uh, and this is what, what we, we see now. And the last uh, thing that I want to share with you is my next uh, 
project that is 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 uh, ready, almost ready to <laughs> to show. That is my book, and uh, the name is the, from tradition to creation, and compile uh, all this road that I've been uh, walking uh, since 1994 when I started to make paper, and also my teaching experience and the history of paper making that I've been making a research for uh, five or six years and uh, and the method to make uh, different techniques to make paper from plants the Japanese uh, the Japanese um, process and uh, plant process and different topics and some of my artwork so this project is coming soon and uh, I think it's going to be on uh, October or November, more or uh, less. So that is uh, that's all I want to wanted to say. And, and I hope you enjoy this uh, paper making in Chile. So I'm open to answer your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carolina. Um, the first question um, says, hi, Carolina, this is Loretta uh, Apolato from the Philippines. Is there any yeah. variety of paper mulberry growing in Chile? Any paper what? Any paper? Paper mulberry. Oh, is uh, the only uh, that is close is Morus Alba. We don't have the the Brusonetia. We have the Brusonetia in, in Eastern Island, but it's not native from in here. And we don't have this, this variety, only Morus Alba. The, the fiber is similar, but not the, the best quality. It's not that long fiber, it's not that wide fiber, but you can use it for, for uh, Asian style of paper making. Thank you. And then the last project that you showed, um, the prints on the larger sheets of paper, someone asked, mm -hmm. how did you insert the photos into the paper? Um, and that it's beautiful. I think it's lithography. I made it in three parts. I was rolling the paper in the, uh, in the lithography, the old uh, lithography press. So you can, you can uh, open the, 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 this barrier where, where you, you pass the, the ink. The, the the plate so I have to do it in three parts to get the 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 size got it were you using metal plates um, or stone metal, metal because plate. this photograph is uh, is a photograph and and I I can take a that that uh, big size uh, of stone is too heavy it would so, be yeah, this metal. We call also we call not lithography. We call algrafia that comes from the aluminium algrafia. Then mm. someone else asked, "Will there be an English version of your book?" No. You do you need an English version? There is so many <laughs> books in English. We need book in Spanish. That's why I wrote this book. <laughs> but I, I, I'm not sure if maybe in the future. But uh, now it's uh, this. This is taking so long for me. This I've been working on this from uh, I think 2016. So it's been hard to get uh, to get not the 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 right part is is the the um, publisher. It's not a common subject. It's not a big public so audience. So it will be an amazing resource when. It is published and available. Um, so that's all the questions we have. Carolina, I just wanted to thank you for sharing your, um, your perspective with us and your emphasis on um, paper making as an art form um, and thinking about how in Chile you're creating your own tradition and thinking about how you can really play with paper and thinking about paper making as um, also it emphasizes process so much and the way that you speak about it is like 
um, a lifestyle and a, an approach to art making um, that involves so much play. Um, yeah, thank you for your perspective. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Very happy to, to talk about uh, this craft in Chile the, is, and, and to, to let the people know our, our artists, our, our um, paper makers and, and students that is, is very popular at the university. This class, they love it. They, they think that they feel that, that they, are, they are really learning something in, in, a, in, a, in a concrete way. Now, it's not only something that I'm telling, it's not only something that I read, I also work with them all the time. I'm moving with them. So yeah, it's yeah. very active class. I think their passion comes across in the pictures. Everyone looks so engaged and the artwork itself is so beautiful. Yeah, mm. your students are creating really great work. Um, one other person said, very interesting and complete lecture. Thanks for the opportunity to, yeah, share your perspective. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, thank you everyone for coming. Um, Carolina, thank you again. This was a wonderful experience. Um, see you all soon. Bye, thank you.